The fourth phase in the design thinking process is prototype. And that is where we make some form of what it is that we're trying to put out for our users, humans, clients, customers. So it's basically a mock-up of what it is that we want to make. And in prototyping, what, the reason that we're doing this is we want to explore to make sure that the problem we have identified, the problem we have ideated on, and the problem that we have tried to solve with our prototype is actually the right problem. So in creating a physical mock-up, uh, a wireframe, a low fidelity mock-up, a paper prototype, a book dummy, whatever it is that we're designing, we want to explore how this thing is working or not working. We want to inspire our users or our colleagues and collaborators by putting something in their hands. So you've often seen these like cardboard mock-ups from the first mouse, the first computer mouse that was ever created. Um, we want to inspire people to find out and collect more data about what is working and what is not working. And a prototype, in whatever form it takes, is a chance to have a conversation, to talk about what this thing is and if it's meeting the needs and creating the feelings in the humans that we are designing for. So some of the things that we need to keep in mind and embrace in this phase of the process is one, failure. They're going to be things that don't work. They're going to be things that we need to just trash completely. And we need to be comfortable with that because the more we can release and let go and move on to a new idea or a new design, the faster, the better the product will be in the end. Iteration. It's multiple attempts. There's no such thing as one of something. We're always producing many versions, many variations, and we call that iteration. That is part of this process. And then the third thing that we want to keep in mind is what we learn from the prototype may mean that we need to revisit empathy, define, ideate, we may need to revisit some of the previous phases. So we want to keep those things in mind. Now, some of the forms that prototypes can take, and depending on whether we're designing for mobile applications or we're designing for services or we're designing a public service announcement, a PSA, an animation, we may be creating paper prototypes. Those are actually still very useful for websites and mobile applications animatics in the terms of uh, motion graphics or animations. We need to test and make sure that the movement and the story that we're trying to tell is effective. Comps, that really stands for comprehensives. So if it's brochures, if it's printed matter, if it's branding, then we need to, keep, then we need to create comprehensives of what these final products will look, look like. And that brings me to low fidelity and high fidelity, especially in mobile application design, for example. We might start out with low fidelity paper prototypes, test those with users, and then take them to higher fidelity until they're actual uh, high functioning, high fidelity prototypes that we're delivering through a prototype service or is actually being developed uh, with the back end code. Wireframes are a form of prototyping. Walkthroughs, if it's service design and we're creating a new service to be delivered, let's go to back to that TSA example. Um, if we're trying to explore how we could redesign that process, we might do walkthroughs, actual tests of whether this process will actually work. And that is also maquettes. If it's a point of purchase experience that we're creating, we might create a mock-up of that point of purchase design. So this is prototyping. 